Well, hello there. I'm Robert, and this behind me, well, that's the 2023 A-Liner Expedition. This is going to be the mattress model, so it has a 60 by 80 queen bed in the back. Very comfortable and very roomy. If you're looking for something smaller you can put in the garage, tow behind a small SUV, this is probably your ticket. Got a three cubic foot refrigerator in there. Oh, to heck with all that. Let's just do a walkthrough. Come on. All right, folks, this expedition is gonna measure right at 18 feet long, has a 15 foot long box. It is fiberglass with Asville backing. Got a nice graphics package going on there. This has the torsion axles on here by Dexter. We've got an E-coated and powder coated frame, so she's sure not to rust, corrode, and look ugly down the road. Four stabilizers on this unit. We have one exterior electrical outlet and three indoor. We also have that high wind lift assist that locks it down during high winds. It can also aid in lifting of the roof. Very nice. Two five gallon propane tanks on this unit. Spare tire on the back, of course. We have an LP quick connect, water heater, diamond plate up on the front, electric brakes, city and an 11 gallon water tank. Very nice folks, what do you think? All right, folks, check it out. This unit weighs 2,270 pounds from the factory. You can tow this thing with a small truck, even a smaller car, as long as the tow rating is higher than that 2,200 pounds, right? Okay, right here, we're gonna have a little switch that's gonna control our night light or an interior light. We have our fire extinguisher, of course. That's gonna be a 40 by 80 booth. So when you drop that down to a bed, you can sleep one to two if they're small enough. These dormers give us just tons of space here, plenty of headspace up top. And of course, in this expedition unit, we've got a lot of floor space. Right over here is going to be our toilet. And of course, that's going to be a Dometic cassette toilet, easy to use. A little storage up top, a little more down below, even some organization trays. Kind of help us get stuff where we need it. And of course, that big. 60 by 80 queen bed on the back. Hot and cold water. Got a big old round sink right there. Double burner stove top. Microwave with a turntable. Very nice. Oops. We've got that little RV fridge. And this is going to have a small freezer at the top. Little counter space. And don't forget, you've got a very deep counter here. So when you want to use something back behind here, Plenty of room. You got electrical out here, your controls, furnace down below, and this unit does have the air conditioner with heat pump in it. We've got a 12 volt outlet right here, another 120 volt outlet right here. This is going to be our furnace thermostat and our AC heat pump thermostat. And right over here, we've got a place for you to plug your phone in and charge that. So what do you think, folks? Give this thing a 9 out of 10. Oh yeah, there's a fantastic fan up at the top. Isn't that nice? All right, folks, let's show you how easy a dormer works. We're going to flip a lever here, pull that wall. Flip the lever over here, and pull that wall. We we'll come right up to the front, pull that lever there. It just comes right on down. Super simple, and of course, when we're setting it up, we just reverse that process, push that out, push this one up. Nothing special you have to do. Voila! What do you think? This front dormer on here is going to do the exact same thing. It's going up here, kind of a proofing concept, I guess. These things are absolutely great. So easy to set up, so easy to take down. And again, just reverse the process. And we're done. That easy, folks. Check this out. Your first wall, that's also your emergency exit. Super simple. You have to get out of here or you're ready to go. Flip these two levers wall comes right on down. Got a nice rubber stopper up top. And we're out of there, folks. Putting it back up. Same thing. Nothing special to do. Just lift. Flip your two levers. 
and you're camping on that side. Same thing on the front. There's two levers. And on this one, you need to separate your door latch. Once you've done that, you've got that separated. You take and lift this one here. When this wall comes down, that door stays on top. And as you're exiting, you're simply going to take that door and close it. How hard is that? When we get ready to put this one up, simply put it up. Flip your other lever. We're camping on that side. And then when you put your door all the way outside, we can latch them together. Super simple. Right there. And we're done. Super easy, folks. What do you think? Very well engineered. This toilet section here, something kind of unique. This is a pivoting toilet, so if we do need to kind of move over to one side or the other, uh, very helpful. And of course, simple flush. And then we can access the cassette on the outside of the toilet or the outside of the camper and empty that toilet. Very easy. And this is going to be your third 120 volt outlet over here, close enough to the kitchen that if you need to borrow some power or anything like that. This right here is just going to simply be our camp table. And when we remove this, whether it's because we want to take it outside to the camp space or if we're going to make our bed, these slats here do double as part of our bed area here. So they're going to lay out. You know, one handed is just not easy, folks. And you'll just do a series of those and then we'll put our cushions down and make that 40 by 80 bed. Very easy. Here's our options list on this unit. If you want to pause your screen. Thoughtfully engineered, sensibly different. However you want to put it, folks, these A-liners are very nice. I can hide them from the homeowners association, pull it with a smaller vehicle, very lightweight. All right, folks, if you know me, you know my background. I'm a very mechanical guy, and I was kind of going around this unit, and I was looking at all the little different areas that would need maintenance and such, and I thought, well, let's kind of add this to the video. I think it'd be very helpful. So let's just start at the back here. I've got these two stabilizer jacks, obviously some lubricant that go on those screws and everything. Whether you're using something like WD-40 or a white lithium grease, we do want to keep those looped up, make them easy to use. Easy to get to the glass on the back to clean the backside. Always make sure your spare tire is mounted and stays tight. And that does include the mounting bolts for the spare tire assembly. Over here, of course, any storage door, you're going to have one of those locks on there. Put you some graphite in there. And we sell that in our service department or parts department. Down here, you're going to have a little propane connect. And inside there, you're going to have some mechanical components. And it wouldn't hurt to do a shot of WD-40 in there occasionally. Make sure there's no dust or anything in there. Keep it always clean. Nothing to do on that right there. Our electrical outlet. Tires and wheels. Of course, you always want to double check the torque on those wheels occasionally. Make sure that's correct. On your door itself, you're going to have a series of hinges, series of seals, and we want to use the appropriate lubricant and conditioner on those. Seals can always be replaced if you tear them, lose them, or what have you. We've got another one over here, we want to condition that, but not too much because those are held on with an adhesive. You don't want to reactivate it so they can fall off. Steps, well, you've got a lot of little hinge components here. We can put some lithium grease on there. 
and that'll keep things operating smoothly. Another package compartment, so we want to take care of that key cylinder. Another stabilizer jack up here, same thing. Put you some WD-40 or something on there. We don't want a lot of a lot of lubricant on there to hold dirt or anything like that. We just want to keep things protected. LED lights and such, not much maintenance involved on that. Another baggage compartment, take care of that key lock cylinder. We've got these strong arms or lifts. Those, there's not any maintenance to do. There's nothing to do on the clips on here. All the seals can be conditioned. Just use the correct product on there. And again, don't use so much that you activate the adhesive that holds them on there. We just want to put it on the surface and keep them nice. All right, let's go to the inside and take a look. And inside, well, there's really not a ton of maintenance to do in here. Obviously, as you go camping and you're assembling things and disassembling, we want to double check all of our seals here. Put a conditioning product on there, but again, don't activate the adhesive. Got a foam seal here, and then another bulb seal here that you condition. Now, we're not talking hours to condition those seals. Put a little bit of it on a rag and start wiping them down. As they get darker, you know you've applied the lubricant. And we have this interior hinge. Now, I have noticed that these kind of start getting a little dark, um, almost like the hinge in your house, absolutely. Um, just put a little bit of lubricant on a, on a rag, but not a wet. And we just want to wipe that off there and get any black off. And let's put this sucker down. And we'll look at the other seals. Bear with me. All right, and some more of those dust seals. And you can tell the difference between a dust seal and an actual weather seal. This open, kind of a uh, porous foam. It's just a dust seal. When you get to these rubber seals, that's gonna be a bulb seal. We've got another one that's on top of this dormer. We've got one over here on the side. So, just a rag and some lubricant, and you've got this thing whooped, folks. Very simple, very easy. And washing these is a breeze, that's for sure, because you can fold everything down, clean your windows and glass, real easy to do, folks. So if I missed anything, let me know in the comments. Appreciate all the help I can get. Please like, share, and subscribe. So just remember, folks, if your A-liner ever needs service, or maybe it has a leak, it wasn't designed to have one.